The Rifleman. Starring Chuck Connors. Now, Billy, I sure hate to do this. I believe in giving folks a chance. But you leave me no alternative, lest you apologize to my lovely bride. Clarence, you still in the back? Be right with you, Miss Miller. Don't worry. Just wondering if he's left. Clarence, you still in the back? I accept you apologize, Billy. Now, we'll let you go this time. Got time to run a quick mop over this floor, too? Sure do, Miss Millie. I better put some fresh water in the bucket first before I get more dirt on the floor than I take off. <laughs> Fine. Don't tell me you're starting to wear a gun. Shucks, no, Miss Millie. I get 25 cents for cleaning them, and I just wear them until folks pick them up. Oh, well, I'm mighty glad of that. Be pretty silly for Clarence Bibbs to start carrying a gun. Sure would be silly. Imagine that, a mop boy wearing a gun. London. He don't crack a smile, those fancy clothes he wears. Be your last one. I'd sooner rile a rattlesnake. I didn't mean it, mister. I sure didn't mean to throw that water on you. Mr. McCain, I, I was just coming out with this bucket, see, and I've been wearing this gun belt. I've been cleaning this gun, see, it's, a, it's one of these triggerless fanning jobs. I was just not thinking he shot. He shot and then some. George Tanner's sure gonna ride in when he hears about the killing. No, it's too bad that Clarence don't wear a gun. We'd have ourselves a show today. The marshal out of town. Maybe we can get ourselves a show. That's when I threw the slop water, I know. I seen the whole thing, Mr. McCain. Clarence just beat him to the trigger pull. About the fastest holster snapshot I've ever seen. Well, I wouldn't say that. I... It seems to me Clarence here has been doing some practicing on the side with those guns he's been cleaning, eh, Clarence? Reed, what are you trying to pull? 
Well, I'm just giving credit where credit's due, Mr. McCain. Hey, Wicks, get Longdon's gun. It's a gunfight winner's got certain rights. And I guess Clarence here has uh, got a right to that fancy gun of Longdon's, huh? Well, I'll leave it up to you, Mr. McCain, since you're taking Marshal Micah's place today. Clarence's got a right to Longdon's gun, or don't he? All right, Reed. I never heard you open your mouth except to bum a drink or use somebody's misfortune. Now, why don't you just keep out of this? Just protecting Clarence's rights. Protecting the rights of the fastest gun North Fork's ever seen. Well, I'm getting more credit. Here it is. Couldn't be worn by a better man, Clarence. I'm glad to call you my friend. Clarence. You don't know anything about guns. Why don't you take it off? I know all about guns, Mr. McCain. I mean, I've been practicing, you know, fast draw, kind of make-believe, with the guns I get to clean. I know it. <laughs> I know he's been practicing the slick draw for years. <laughs> Come on, Clarence, we'll buy you a drink. You can tell us all about it. Go, Clarence. <laughs> he shouldn't be wearing that gun. But he looks so proud, I didn't have the heart to take it away from him. What are those two loafers up to, Lucas? Well, I'm trying to decide whether they're just leading Clarence along for the drinks he can buy them, or if they're setting him up for George Tanner. George Tanner? Longdon's partner. He's over at Slag Creek. He's bound to come right in here sooner or later. Looking for Clarence? No, I don't think so. When Tanner finds out it was an accident, he'd be pretty stupid to go looking for trouble. And I'm sure Clarence doesn't want any. <laughs> I'd better get back to work. Hello, son. How was school today? Mm, same as usual, waiting to get out. Something happened in town? Uh, an accidental shooting. A man named Longdon. George Tanner's partner? Well, from the last grade you brought home on current events, I would have never guessed you were so well informed. Everybody in school was talking about George Tanner being so nearby, over in Slag Creek. You know, he used to ride with Billy the Kid, saved Wyatt Earp's life. And in one day, he shot four outlaws that were trying to... Mark, Mike has sent word to be late. So I guess tonight you're going to be bunk mates with Bobby Hamilton. Well, that's great. Bobby's good in arithmetic. But you're not. So you'll do your homework alone in Micah's office. Oh, now, Paul, who said Bobby was going to help me with my homework? You did. <laughs> I was your age once, son. You never know it. Oh. Come on, second one goes down easier. Slides like that. <coughs> Two or three give you a steady hand. George Tanner comes to town. George Tanner? Yeah, along this gun partner. Oh, George Tanner, I heard of him. I'm betting folks are going to change their mind about you when you take Tanner on. Folks are saying you're killing Longman was accident. George Tanner. Well, I guess it's going to be either him or me, eh, boys? Uh, my money's on you, Clarence. When that George Tanner comes into town, I'm going to chase him right out again. Come on, drink up now. Sure, sorry we didn't bring our money with us, but next time the drinks are on us. Well, I better not have any more, boys. I want to have a steady hand when I face this George Tanner. But you boys, go ahead. I got two more whole dollars right here in my pocket. All right. things a bit, aren't you, son? Well, by the time I grow up, everything will be all over. 
Outlaws, renegade Indians, be nothing exciting left to do. <laughs> That's why I felt when I was a boy. The past seems more exciting. But when you're a full-grown man, you'll see there's still lots of things to do. Railroads to be built, cities, bridges. I'd rather hunt buffalo. Well, some things do pass, <laughs> including Mark McCain, if he studies his homework. gentlemen. I knew he was going to be riled when that water hit him, see? And knew that I didn't have time to draw and take careful aim. Son, tell Mrs. Hamilton I'll try and get over for supper if Mike gets back on time. All right. Sorry to disturb you. I was looking for some information. The name's Tanner. George Tanner. The gunfire. Well, it's mostly gun toting, son. And mostly in the hire of folks that need some law where there isn't any real law. It's a dying profession. Oh, like buffalo hunting. Yeah, like buffalo hunting. Oh, bye. Goodbye. You the marshal? No, I'm Lucas McCain. The marshal's over at Burtonville testifying at a trial. I'm uh, watching the store. This uh, shooting you had here today, uh, pretty well straightened out? Mr. Tanner, that shooting was completely accidental. That's good enough for me. Well, you just took a load off my mind. Mr. McCain, I'm too old a hand to engage in theatrics. I rode with Longdon, we worked as a team. But if the law is satisfied it wasn't murder, I'm satisfied. I owe him nothing. Well, the man who shot Longdon, Clarence Bibbs, he handles the mop better than he does a gun. Odd cleaning jobs around town, some stores, a saloon. He was throwing out a dirty pail of wash water and it hit Longdon. Longdon drew his gun, Clarence stumbled back, he fell and his his gun went off accidentally. That's how it was. That's how it was. We never know who or when. Is there such a thing as a cold beer in North Fork? Right across the way. Join me? Well, I'd be glad to if you let me by. Uh, Mr. Tanner, this Clarence Bibbs, he's a harmless fella. Matter of fact, he'd give you the shirt off his back. But right now, he's, well, he's kind of enjoying the limelight. Town hero. Saloon hero is more like it. He's over there now. Clarence's basking in the limelight doesn't bother me one bit. What does bother me is going without that cold beer because somebody in that saloon might ruffle my feathers. Well, then let's go wet down that road dust you picked up. But you get off a much faster shot that way. Maybe you get a chance to show us, Clarence, when George Tanner gets here. Yeah, maybe get to show George Tanner, too. Run him a thing or two. <laughs> <laughs> saying I don't feel a mite sorry for that Mr. Tanner. Longdon might have been a good friend of his, and the body don't like to lose a good friend. Benson, two beers, please. That's an insult if I ever saw one. Just walks in and makes out like you don't even see him. Who don't see me? Gee, Tanner, sizing you up. Anybody looked at me like that, I'd do something fast. Don't look like much to me. Not much at all. I take it your name is George Tanner. And I have the pleasure of talking to Clarence Bibbs. You heard about me? From Mr. McCain. I even let Longdon draw first. Mr. Bibbs, men like Longdon are destined for a short life. If it hadn't been you, it would have been someone else. It don't rile you that your partner is dead? 
It was a fair fight, wasn't it? Mr. Tanner, there ain't enough room in this town for both of us. The class. Yes. It's all right. Just what was the point you were going to make? I mean, I'm telling you to get out of town right now. And if I don't get out of town, no. Well, I guess we got some more grave room alongside Longden. Would you, uh, be courteous enough to let me finish my beer? I want you to get out of town now. Right now. temper in the face of insult. You sure show a lot of self-control. Chased him out. Chased him right out. He's out there joining with McCain. Told me to get right out of town. Be all over town. Tanner and Lucas McCain treating Clarence like a mop boy. Been a pleasure, Mr. McCain. Ever ride by again, stop out of my ranch. Won't say my cooking's the best, but Mark and I get by at it. I'd like that. I'm glad I stopped by to see you before I went to that saloon. All right. Mr. Bibbs, a word of advice. Sell that gun for what it'll bring and go back to your mop. You'll lead a far happier life and a fuller one. Clarence! Hey, Clarence. You can do better than one mop for that fancy gun. Get a dozen, at least. <laughs> What'd you tell him about me, Mr. McCain? The truth, that Longdon's death was accidental? That I was only a mop boy. Clarence, you're no gun hand. You never fired a gun in your life. Who asked you to interfere? Well, if I didn't, you would have been facing Tanner's gun. Now, wake up, Clarence. He could have emptied his gun into you before you cleared your holster. I think it's time that you came down to Earth. Time that you stop wearing that gun. Time to be a mop boy again. Time to laugh at people joking me. Time to laugh out loud, because if I don't, I'll bust out crying. Mr. McCain! I'm drawing on you. I wouldn't advise that, Clarence. I'm not asking for advice. I'm telling you I'm drawing on you and I expect you to be ready. Are you ready, Mr. McCain? Don't do it, Clarence. I'm ready, Mr. McCain! <laughs> What's the matter, Clarence? Gun too heavy? Have you heard the mop handle? Maybe it's a good thing you couldn't draw it, Clarence. You might have blowed your toes off with that famous fast holster snapshot you got. <laughs> You'd sure be a sight, hobbling around on one foot, mopping a floor. 
and say, Clarence, come on, I see you're real disappointed. Let's you and us play draw, huh? Shoulder shots, Clarence. Draw and Nick. Are you ready, Clarence? You've been looking for a fight. We sure don't want to disappoint you. Aren't you boys taking quite a chance? Nobody's asking you to interfere, Mr. McCain. We're just playing a little draw, Nick. They sure have confidence. More than I had when Clarence said he was going to draw. You notice I never did give him a chance to get his hand near that holster. You see, with all the years of make-believe drawing Clarence has done, I got a sneaking hunch he's more of an expert than we give him credit for. Whose leg are you pulling, McCain? No, I've just been wondering about Clarence. Shooting that straight when Longdon drew his gun? His killing Longdon was accident, I saw it. Accident or trick shooting? Now, don't forget it's a game, Clarence. No shooting to kill. I'm ready. I'm sure enough ready. You know, George Tanner's a smart man. He never gambles. But then I guess you fellas got more sporting blood than he has, huh? Guess it's only fair for you boys to draw first. I sure don't want to take no mean advantage with my slick draw practicing. <laughs> it don't seem right, Clarence, us facing you like this after drinking your liquor. Well, that's all right, boys. I sure don't want to disappoint anybody that wants to draw again, me. Watch his eyes, boys. When they narrow, that's when his hand starts moving. <laughs> you sure take things serious, Clarence. <laughs> Can't you tell him we was only spoofing? Mr. McCain, I've been thinking maybe this fancy gun ought to be sold for proper burial money for Longdon. Maybe for a fancy headstone like the clothes he liked to wear. I'll take care of it for you, Clarence. Mr. McCain, I want you to know that all the time I was in that saloon, I was only thinking about one thing. How tomorrow I'll be a mop boy again, and people will be looking at me without seeing me. If George Tanner killed me, I'd be somebody. Even dead. Well, I'm glad you feel different about it now. So how about joining me for a drink? Uh, a cup of coffee at Micah's office. Sure glad you don't want to drink anything stronger than coffee, Mr. McCain. Red Eye Whiskey and me don't agree. <laughs> Come on. About Mr. Tanner, Paul. Says here he killed his first man when he was only 12 years old. Whether he did or not, Mark, I don't know. He's a very famous man, that's true. But he's also an unhappy one. He'd trade everything, his reputation, his ability with a gun, everything he has, if he could change places with Clarence. Or, for that matter, with you. Well, I'd sure like to trade places with him. I guess most boys would. Think he'll ever come back to Northport? That's hard to say, son. Sure hope he does. Any particular reason? Oh, I don't know. It just makes me think of buffalo and prairie wagons, Indians. Mark, your dreams will supply all the buffalo, prairie wagons, and Indians you'll ever need. How did you know I dream about those things? Son, you keep forgetting I used to be your age. Well, I guess that doesn't seem too long ago to you, huh? <laughs> Only yesterday, Mark. Only yesterday. Thank you. 